Okay, hi, we're gonna talk about creatine phosphate, creatine. This is a very common supplement that a lot of athletes and weightlifters take. Um, it basically provides a reservoir of high energy phosphates within a skeletal muscle cell that can be transferred to ADP to very quickly replenish it into becoming ATP. ATP is like a $20 bill inside of a skeletal muscle cell to provide energy for muscle contraction. So the cell cannot store very high levels of ATP in its cytoplasm because the energy charge is important in regulating other biochemical pathways like glycolysis. So if the ATP level was too high, you wouldn't be running glycolysis in the forward direction. Instead, the phosphate energy is stored on phosphocreatine. A person eats the supplement called creatine, and then once it gets into the skeletal muscle cell, it becomes phosphorylated and readily available for when the person's physically active to start handing off phosphates, high energy phosphates, to the ATP to re make it into ATP. So you can see here, here's just a drawing of phosphocreatine, the phosphate's in green, and you can see the two big negative charges on it. Um, here's ADP, so that's adenosine diphosphate, and the diphosphate is sort of just a preparation molecule. It's also a substrate in this reaction. Then here one can see is the creatine that has released its phosphate. The phosphate's in green, and now the phosphate is attached to the ATP. So it was ADP for diphosphate. Now it's ATP for triphosphate. And the key thing to phosphates on an ATP is that they've got a lot of negative charges, so they repel each other. As a matter of fact, there's a magnesium that's going to be latched onto those two phosphates with its positive charge to hold them together. Because that's why that phosphate is so high energy. It wants to get away with its negative charges away from the adjacent phosphate with negative charges. So um, it's especially important for skeletal muscle. There's some use of it, some importance in cardiac muscle, in brain tissue, in the retina of the eye, in sperm cells. Um, and in and endothelial cells. Um, so it is a good thing, but there's a difference between something your body makes versus taking a supplement. When you take a supplement, that's a whole different uh, scenario than just eating foods or your body doing things that it does on its own. Okay, so oh, here's a quote from Arthur Jones, uh, a guy from 1926 to 2007. He lived. He was a guy who invented the Nautilus machines, ran the Nautilus company. And here's what he said. He said, there must be a few bodybuilders who are not idiots, but if so, they are well camouflaged and live in some undiscovered cave. So it's a joke, but of course, bodybuilders tend to sacrifice their health for short-term gains. I think what happens is young men, you know, our ancestors many thousands of years ago, the young men want to go off with the, the big men and go hunting and do all the things that big men do. And a young man intellectually can't compete with an old guy because the old guy's got a lot of experience, knows a lot of stuff. But the young guy, they got more high testosterone, more endothelial nitric oxide, so they can show off how physically strong they are. And they really want to get strong. It's, it's just, just a normal thing. In high school, the guy in college, guys all want to lift weights, you know, partially to attract a woman, but also to be strong like a grown man, to be as strong as their fathers. Okay, but then they start wanting to take shortcuts. And here's the typical scenario. They first start eating more meat because they think, I got to eat more meat, be strong like a big animal, and have more protein. Um, then the next, like, you know, of course, the old vegan thing, as soon as you say you're going vegan, they're like, where are you going to get your protein? Next thing is, they start drinking caffeine for their pre-workout meal, thinking the caffeine is going to supercharge their energy for athletic performance. Then the next thing that comes after that is protein supplements. And protein supplements are really bad, much, I think much worse, because they have a tendency to put these guys at increased risk for kidney failure. And you got to worry about quality control. You know, when you eat a food that's made by nature, there's at least some quality control in that. Nature knows what it's doing. Um... Stuff made by these supplement companies, you don't know who's making it most of the time, unless it's some good company in a good country. <laughs> Be careful. You're going to trust your kidneys to that? All right. So the next step up in guys uh, taking all these supplement things is they start taking creatine. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But I'll just mention the other things. The next up after creatine, they take, start taking something called SARMs, selective androgen receptor modulators that bind to androgen receptors, and they... And they're thought to increase muscle growth. And the word on the street from the young guys is, oh, they're like a legal steroid. You can buy them off the Internet. Um, 
And then the next thing, the next dramatic stage is to go take anabolic steroids. And you can see tons of guys have died from this. I mean, there's a lot of real famous bodybuilders who've died from messing around with all these steroids and stuff. And there was one guy, I don't know if he's still alive or not, but he put himself in a kidney failure. He's this power lifter, Andy Bolton. I like the guy. I bought his books. I watched his video. You know, I like lifting weights, but I don't take any of this stuff. And well, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you something. I did experiment with creatine because I read all the articles 15 years ago and it was very positive and I wasn't as sophisticated then as I am now. I've become much more skeptical after studying all the nutrition literature and all the supplement literature for many years. And um, I took it for, and a, and a month later, I had a rotator cuff tendonitis and I had to stop weightlifting for a year. So I got burned by creatine. That was the only thing new in my life. And so I think it was because of the creatine, by the way, that's my own personal anecdotal experience. All right, so uh, if you go to the popular weightlifting channels, for example, the young guys really like this one guy, he's called, his site's called More Plates, More Dates. You know, they have this idea that the stronger you get, the more attractive you be to women. And I'm like, you know, if you wanna impress a girl, focus on your bank account, not your bench press, okay? Um, but anyways, like what this guy says, he's like, oh, well, you know, you're bigger than the average person, you're a weightlifter probably, so you probably should be taking the high end of the dose on creatine. By the way, I'm going to recommend don't take creatine. But I will also admit, I searched the literature and it's not as easy to find problems with it as I thought it was going to be. Because I had read about it in the past. I bought, when I first did this 15 years ago, this $80 book. And that's partly why I was so ready to quit it. I was just starting to read that at the time I got injured. And the gist of it was, I, I, wrote, I bought this book, A Summary of All the Research Studies. And the conclusion of the article would say, no proven indication that it causes kidney failure. No proven indication that it's an increased risk of causing cancer. And you're like, well, gee, that sounds good. But then, you know, at that time, I read through the body, the middle of the articles, and it would, it would give off these metabolites that were carcinogenic, or it'd give off a metabolite that was, you know, potentially going to increase the risk of kidney failure. Uh, so let's see, what else about it? Oh, it's now promoted for all kinds of things, as if it's going to improve cognitive function. I would never take supplement because even though theoretically the supplement thing might in vivo have a benefit for brain function, I'd be so worried about contaminants, I would not take it. Um, and one of my kids wants to take this and that's partly what motivated me to read about it because um, it's real hard to convince a 20 year old. You know, a 20 year old is kind of like, you're just old, you're just jealous, you know, like a typical thing. My kid had a girlfriend, you know, they broke up. A week later he's with a new girlfriend and I'm like, dude, slow down. Find someone you really like and stay with them. And you shouldn't be running around. You're going to end up with venereal disease. It'll mess up your life. He's like, oh, dad, you're just jealous. And, you know, same thing like with weightlifting. I try to tell him, don't be taking a supplement. He's like, oh, you're just jealous because you're old, you're weak, you can't lift much. You know what? I'm saying these things for a good reason. Okay, so what's my big observation with muscle building supplements? You typically, they promise the sky. We'll make you bigger, stronger, faster, smarter. Everything gets better. And, you know, a couple months, a year later, you got, you know, a chump with an empty wallet and potentially a new health problem. Okay, uh, because like I said, you don't know where these things are, are made quite often. A lot of times they don't even tell you what country. There isn't the same quality control for these as there are for medications. And even, you know, medications, you'd want more quality control. Okay, well, real quick, go through some of the articles. By the way, creatine is a precursor um, that, first of all, it gets... A phosphate attached to it and then it can give phosphates ATP. When it's going to be excreted by the kidneys, it gets converted into creatinine. So creatinine is what you'll hear measured in blood tests. Normal is about 1.2 or less. And one of the problems with creatine is that as it gets made into creatinine, it can raise blood levels of creatinine. So it can cause a false positive in a sense blood test for kidney failure because of elevated creatinine. So that is true. And that's one of the things the defenders of creatine will tell you, oh, a lot of this renal failure stuff is just false positives. And there is some truth in that, okay? Um, now, the real big question is, do you trust your kidneys with this? Because, you know, if somebody's getting drafted for pro sports and they got a chance to make a million dollars and they don't have any other good options, you know, maybe go ahead, take your creatine and whatever else, and maybe that'll help you. Okay, but a regular guy who just wants to be in shape, why risk your kidneys? Why risk other problems for these things? And now they're going to tell you, oh, it's safe for the kidneys. I'm not so sure. I have to admit, though, the literature was more positive than I had expected it to be. 
Uh, protein supplements are very famous for having lots of heavy metal contaminants. There's been several articles about that in Consumer Reports. Um, the typical young guy often can potentially is at risk for a synergistic effect. They're taking, routinely taking protein supplements and they superimpose upon that um, this creatine. It's potentially more dangerous in that way. So here's the first article. Acute renal failure in a young weightlifter taking multiple food supplements including creatine. Creatine monohydrate is the most common form they take it in. And critics of this article say, well, he was taking more than one thing. Yep, that's true. Renal biopsy was positive for interstitial nephritis, so that's bad. Uh, he quit the supplements, made a complete recovery. Yeah, that's an important thing to do. If you start feeling like you're getting worse, definitely quit all first. And again, I recommend you don't take this stuff. Interstitial nephritis in a patient taking creatine. Now we're here. I'm going to follow along with, my, along with my mouse so it's easier for people to follow along with what I'm saying. 20-year-old um, took creatine, got interstitial nephritis. Now, this is what I run into. That previous article, article behind a paywall, this article, only a partial abstract is available. That keeps happening over and over and over again very frequently when you try to read about creatine and that's a bad sign that's a sign that potentially they're trying to hide something because that doesn't usually happen when i study other non-financial topics creatine is a billion dollar supplement so I've, I've i've seen this before anytime you read about something that's you know that got billions of commercial dollars behind it it becomes very difficult to ever hear any criticism of it plus there's a lot of sort of semi-smart bodybuilder guys that, that do go through the literature on this stuff, but they almost all work for some company or something that sells these supplements, so they have to be positive about them if they want to keep the job. Okay, so here's another article. Creatine, a safety concern. Oh, no text available. Not even an abstract. So that was frustrating. I ran into that over and over again. Here's the next one. Renal dysfunction accompanying oral creatinine supplements by Pritchard in The Lancet. Article behind a paywall. So they did mention that uh, patient taking creatine, got substantial kidney dysfunction. They mentioned that there was some story about three college wrestlers in the United States who uh, died, which were potentially linked to creatine. Then there was a letter to the, to the journal by this man here, Paul Greenhalf, and he said, no, 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 um, it wasn't the creatine causing their kidney failure. And he also challenged the claim that those wrestlers had died from creatine. He suggested it was because of an excessive rapid weight loss uh, methods that they used. But one of the things you'll notice here is the letter criticizing the article is printed in full. But the article itself, you're not allowed to read it. So what that does is it favors the positive information on creatine over the negative information. So that's shaping the mind of the, of the reader because they can only read the positive stuff. They can't read the negative stuff. Next article, impaired renal function. Be aware of exogenous factors. Okay, so that was a lady who had a problem, stopped creatine, and she got better. Uh, and again, I only got an abstract on that. Next one, potential adverse effects of creatine supplement on kidney in athletes. Okay, and now this one said that, oh, they didn't find a significant effect on the kidney in healthy people. A lot of people aren't as healthy as they think with their kidneys, like they're on protein supplements. They could have a protein problem, and that could lead to additional problems. But anyways, why was this article interesting? Because it showed that the metabolic byproducts of it, especially somebody taking the higher dose of creatine, was to produce methylamine, which is not such a big deal, but formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a toxic aldehyde. I did a recent lecture on alcohol, oil, and that whole omega-6 conversion to toxic aldehydes, especially in people who can't metabolize alcohol well. And so what I'm saying is high doses of creatine have been associated with increased production of formaldehyde, a toxic substance, okay? especially when they take it chronically. You know, they sort of overwhelm the normal metabolic degradation pathways. Okay, creatine and cancer risk. Um, I one time saw this guy, bodybuilder, about 45 years old, really muscle-bound guy, and he had like three types of cancer. And so I'm like, you know, what's going on? And I, you know, he was taking creatine, but you know, and he's taking a whole bunch of other things, so I can't say it's related to creatine. He was taking steroids. I don't know any other things he's doing. And steroids are a more powerful drug, obviously, by far, and there's a lot of different variations on these anabolics. I mean, bodybuilders, you know, you like looking how big their muscles are, but they're not healthy. I mean, I think it was the Fiber Fuel book. I'm not positive about that, but I think it was. They mentioned the professional bodybuilder average age of death was 54 but I haven't been able to find the reference to that but in general they're not healthy guys I've seen lots of times I look at these old bodybuilders they're going for hip replacements 
they got BPH, you know, benign prostatic hypertrophy. They need uh, some type of surgery for that or a catheter. They got a lot of problems. They're not like healthy role models. Um, the next thing mentioned was that creatine supplementation can potentially form these heterocyclic amines. And it appears that it does form heterocyclic amines, which are mutagenic, meaning that they can damage DNA and potentially carcinogenic. Um, the article says, though, that the amount of HCAs, heterocyclic amines formed from creatine supplements, is very small in comparison with the amount that they get from other things, like from eating meat especially, especially grilled or smoked meats, as well as in a lot of processed foods, some food flavorings, beer, wine, cigarette smoke, etc. So they don't think that creatine supplements are a major supplier of them. That's probably true. Uh, muscle building supplement, MBS, that's the abbreviation for muscle building supplements, increased risk of testicular cancer. That one didn't distinguish between the patient's creatine or their steroids, so it might have been primarily a steroid effect. Um, and by the way, a lot of this stuff, too, is, is behind paywalls, and I'm looking at abstracts. Very difficult to find a complete article on this. Um, the next one is circumstantial evidence suggests that creatine may add to carcinogenesis by forming AIA and nitrosyl compounds that covalently modify DNA guanine bases. Okay, so then they say, on the basis of our current knowledge, however, creatine derived from these compounds may only impose a minor health risk, but intensive research must continue. So, again, there's hints of all these problems, you know, precancerous metabolites, potential interstitial nephritis in the kidneys. I also had the experience that you would only see positive stuff when you go to any type of bodybuilder site or any type of place that sells nutrient supplements and vitamins and all this stuff. But then you go into a forum, like where the guys are talking to each other, the bodybuilder guys, and you'll hear them talking about a lot of problems, which they may not be right, but they're attributing to creatine and other supplements. Here's another article writing about creatine. Is it worth the risk? Guess what? They won't let you see the article. They won't even let you see an abstract on it. So it's hard to know. As I mentioned before, there's also anecdotally uh, suggestions that it increases muscle tendon stiffness. So your tendon stiffness, and that's what happened to me. I had a I got a, a tendonitis a month after doing it. And some people say, well, that's just because your tendon can't handle the stronger muscle. I don't know. I don't think I was getting that one stronger. All of a sudden, for the first time in my life, I got a rotator cuff problem, and I had to quit weightlifting for a year. Um, there's other things. Anecdotally, some say it causes hair loss. Others say it don't. I don't know if that's true. I sort of ran out of time to study that. I don't really care about that. It's a little too late for me to worry about that. Um, big thing I worry about with supplements is there's been problems, and this is in protein supplements, not specifically in creatine, with heavy metals and poor quality control. They're not regulated that tightly. Um, and here, for example, in this article, it was called Levels of Creatine, Levels in Creatine of Organic Contaminants and Heavy Metals in Creatine Dietary Supplements. And creatinine is another contaminant. Okay, and this article said the only detectable contaminant was mercury. They said it was at a rate lower than one milligram per kilogram. That sounds like a very high amount to me, but I don't know what the amount was. Um, so, and again, the article's behind a paywall. So almost anything that could possibly be negative about creatine, you'll find it's behind a paywall. Okay, and it's not like that when I study other subjects that are not, you know, big profitable uh, foods or food supplements. So anyways, uh, my recommendation would be avoid the stuff because I would be worried about contaminants and these potential complications. But, you know, if you're a pro athlete and you got a million dollar contract, it's your only chance to make some money, you know, and it's not that bad. I'd maybe take it in that case. But for a regular guy who just wants to be fit, I think it's crazy and stupid to take this stuff and risk uh, having problems and potentially those contaminants. They're more common in stuff than people realize.